Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Today we are talking about building your tax business. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Carmen Mohan. I'm the CEO and founder of Straight Tax, which is a virtual tax and accounting firm located here in New York. Um, the reason why I say we're a virtual tax and accounting firm is because we have built our business around being able to provide services to clients in all 50 states. And we've invested a lot of time, energy, and money in building this business model that we were able to pivot during the tax season, right? We have a whole back end virtual system process to be able to help our clients from A to Z in assisting them with all of their tax and accounting needs. But today's video is not about us or straight tax. Today's video is about tax professionals and giving them a little bit of insight on how they can build their tax business, right? Um, and so for those of you that don't know, when I started in this industry, one of the biggest mistakes that I made as a new tax business was purchasing a tax franchise. Those, there's a lot of people that may not know my background on how I started in this industry, but I was 25 years old and I purchased a tax franchise um, which I will not name the franchise for legal purposes. And so when I started this journey at the time, I believed that purchasing a tax franchise was a great decision. I believed that building a, that purchasing a franchise that had a national brand already had a lot of uh, market marketability, right? I, I believe that they already had um, a, such a strong brand awareness that now starting and creating a company behind them, I believed it was like the biggest thing on earth at that time, right? So initially, when we purchased the tax franchise back in 2014, Initially, when we purchased the franchise, we were all excited. I was all excited. It was my first real business venture, and it, I was purchasing a franchise. So I believed at that time that it was the most amazing thing ever. I was so happy. I was so excited. But I very quickly realized that purchasing a tax franchise was a huge mistake, and I'm going to tell you why for a couple of different reasons. One, just the actual liquidity of it, right? It took us thousands of dollars just to purchase rights to a territory. For those of you that don't know how franchises work, um, they work as far as territory basis. And so that means that you have basically a plot of land that you have now rights to. So then you also have to, after purchasing the rights to that territory, then still get a office or storefront location, which is going to get, a, which is going to run you up additional expenses and so at that time when i purchased the tax franchise back in 20, uh, 2014 when i was 25 years old the said franchise fee was forty thousand dollars on top of that we had to get a location first month's rent security deposit build signage um and turn the lights on turn all the utilities on and so just getting up and running to be able to open the doors costs like another 20 to twenty five thousand dollars now when you're a new business or a new business owner starting out negative sixty thousand dollars we'll use 60 um as a basis starting out negative sixty thousand dollars could easily put you in the red and it's a harder track to climb to try to reach your initial investment plus then become uh, profitable. So at the time, one of the biggest mistakes that I made was purchasing the franchise. Um, and I believe so now because looking back at everything that we went through, the deal went bad. So our initial investment when purchasing the franchise was lost. All of the money was gone. And so Looking back at that time, I was very, very, very upset at the fact that the deal didn't go through. And then when things got, things started unraveling and now we had to get, you know, lawyers involved and things like that, 
I started to notice that the franchise corporation themselves didn't really back us up and didn't really help us out. After all of the things, one of the things that I noticed with purchasing the franchise, and I had to learn this the hard way, and when you do your own research on purchasing a franchise, there's a lot of cons that go into it. And I'm gonna release a YouTube video about the full purchasing a tax franchise, my story, and everything that's wrong with purchasing a tax franchise. Today I'm talking about to tax pros, building their tax business, so I'm sharing a little bit of insight on my, on my initial uh, tax franchise purchase, but I'm not going to go in depth. There will be a YouTube video dropping that I'm going to go in depth about the deal and all the cons when it comes to purchasing a tax franchise. That video is going to be released this, sorry, this week's almost over next week. Um, but I, what I wanted to tell you, because we're going to talk about tax professionals and the things, some of the common mistakes tax professionals are making when building their tax business. We're going to talk about that today. And my story, right, and my journey and what I did, The my biggest mistake, one of my biggest mistakes was entering this business and purchasing a actual franchise location. And the reason being for a couple different reasons, but the main one is that when you purchase a franchise brand, you are due to pay them something that's called royalty fees. They, at the time, took 18% of royalty fees and only about 5% of that went to marketing and advertising. So now your 18% royalty fees come off of the gross revenue. So that means that if I would have made $100,000, I was already negative $60,000, as I discussed earlier in live, that would have left me at $40,000. I still would have had to given them $18,000 off the gross, right? Off the full off the full amount um not off of what we actually got to net and take home. And so when purchasing a franchise, I believe that that was one of our biggest mistakes um, when starting a tax business around, uh, when, when starting in this industry and starting a tax business. Now, there's a lot of new tax professionals on the scene, and I really, really, really believe and truly believe that there are a lot of them that need assistance when it comes to this industry. You know, I have been around small businesses, you know, most of my 20s, um, I'm 32 now, so uh, one of my first jobs ever was helping a e-commerce store get up off the ground. So I've been around business and business owners since my pretty much my late teens, okay? I think I was 17 years old learning about e-commerce and helping him list um, stuff on eBay back when e-commerce was all only just on eBay. So I am very, very, very well aware of small businesses. I'm even more aware about our industry as the tax business industry. And I understand how difficult it is to build a profitable tax business. And I understand even more how difficult it is to have the longevity in what your business is actually doing, right? If you don't want to be a fly-by-night preparer, um, you're going to want to build a sustainable tax business. But what I notice is a lot of new tax professionals that have come on the scene, they don't necessarily focus so much on the business aspect of things they focus more on learning and honing in on the preparation side of things which is amazing i want you guys to take the classes get the certifications i want you guys to really perfect and hone your craft however when building this type of business we are a service provider industry business and so as a service provider there's going to be some things you need to do and keep in mind when building your business so that you you can have a one get to a profitable business model and two get to start create a model that actually has internal processes you know procedures team members um, roles duties responsibilities there's so much that goes into actually building a business there's a lot of tax accountants today and tax professionals today all over the 50 states that aren't doing this correctly. And what I mean by that is, yes, they may be preparing taxes or, or they may have their clients, but what I mean by that is that 
90% of these firms do not have a lean business model or a strong business model. And what I mean by that is they probably either have really high overhead, they probably have only a short term amount of income coming in, they probably only they probably all have outdated processes and procedures and what i mean by that is when we came up in the tax industry we were just trained to be glorified data entry specialists <laughs> and what i mean by that is yes the tax software does do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to tax preparation and so if you know where to enter the data then you'll be able to start learning how to prepare taxes a lot of us learned hands-on and then learned tax law afterwards, um, or you might be learning at the same time. However that looks like for you, there's not a lot of firms that are looking to be more innovative, right? There are not a lot of firms that are looking to be more digital. There's not a lot of firms that are looking to really say, hey, we want to build a long-term company, right? And how are we going to do that today? And how, what does it look like for us in the future for where our company or where we're going as a company? So when learning to the tax business industry, you have to be one, customer center oriented, and two, you have to be able to pivot. If COVID or the pandemic taught us anything in our industry for the tax professionals, we were forced to make some changes or adjustments. When the world shut down and it was COVID, we were considered and deemed essential. So we had to still stay open. So we had to then figure out ways to service our clients and be open without doing so. Now, when it comes to tax professionals, when it comes to building your business, one of the most common mistakes that I see all of the time is that you guys don't take an account into what it's going to take for you to actually build a business. And so versus just you being your own service provider and you being a service professional, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of tax business owners that are looking at the grand scheme of things, right? Um, what does my budget need to look like for payroll? If my tax business is only a seasonal business, what is that percentage amount of budget that I want to schedule out for payroll? And what are the innovations that or, or implementations that we need to be able to build a sustainable business versus just you know, hustling to see clients, you know. You can be a service provider and an independent contractor and see a couple clients, you know, do 25, 50, or even 100 returns, that's great. That's, however, not a sustainable business model for those of you that actually want to build a business in this industry. And so why I say that is I noticed that 80 to 90% of actual tax pros, they, if they don't work for a big corporate account, they work for themselves, a lot of them are either independent contractors only doing a couple returns, a couple meaning 100 or less, and then we have ones that work at big corporations. <coughs> um, and then we have others that work at big corporations, which are the Ernst & Young, the... Um, all of the big four, right? The big four accounting firms. And so what I've noticed is that there's not a lot of assistance when helping people to build their tax business. Um, and so there's a couple of different things that we need to take into account. And so on today's lesson, on today's live, what we're going to talk about is some of the common mistakes. One of the mistakes that I made was purchasing a tax franchise because it kind of set us up for failure to already be in the negative. A second common mistake that I see a lot of tax professionals make is that they're not thinking about the long-term plan and how they're going to build a sustainable business that's going to, one, help their customers, two, make things simple for their customers, and then three, build the long-term, right? And so, hey, Carmen, what does that mean, build the long-term? That means that you're going to be around for 10 years. In our industry, things are constantly updating. 
And so, for instance, when TurboTax was released, that was something that disrupted us in our industry. Because when TurboTax made it so simple for regular people just to punch their numbers in and do taxes, then there started to be less and less of a need to go to a tax office or a tax professional. And if you aren't actually honing in on building your business and you're just doing the data entry form, it's really easy for you to lose your clients. Building the long term is going to think, is, is, is in putting into your mindset, okay, I want to build a company, I want it to be around for 10 years, this is the, the financial industry is what I chose, and for me, financial industry changed my entire life, if for any of you that know my story. But if this is what you want to do, you need to start thinking long term for, hey, how am I going to build a viable business that is going to help people and also be able to help us as a company retain clients, right? Because you can service a client once. But now servicing a client once and retaining that client for multiple years looks very different. Especially in our industry, as a tax professional, you'll hear, oh, I went to this guy last year, I went to this person last year, and that's kind of common for people to switch people. And the reason being for people, the people switch people is because they don't get the level of customer service or they don't get any tax knowledge or tax information. They don't feel like it's a, um, a situation where they're being helped, right? And so a common mistake that I see tax professionals make all the time is not incorporating some of these important things in their day-to-day -day operations. When they start hiring staff, they just have staff maybe do an intake process. And then they have the staff just take over and they have the staff, the staff then just pass over the return and then they do the end of the wrap up the return, the consultation, the questions, whatever it is. They're not thinking about the long term and what types of trainings and protocols need to be put into place to one, train your staff to be able to have a similar or if not the same amount of knowledge that you have as a professional. A lot of them are doing this thing where they handicap their staff members into not understanding full tax law or even full processes and procedures for what that looks like when servicing clients. So that's another mistake that tax professionals make. And I get it for the reasons why they do it, which we won't discuss today. But if you want to build a long-term company, that you then need to have people invested into that company. And what I mean by that is you have to be just as invested into your staff and team members so that they can be just as invested into you, A-E, I-E, your company. And so that's gonna take a lot of different processes and protocols to be put into place or even to handle your customer service correctly, right? Actually going above and beyond, have, ha helping your client from A to Z. Helping your client with this new infrastructure bill being passed, will interest rates go up? Um, I haven't looked into the new bill yet, one and two. Today, we're talking about tax pros. But you can DM me question and I will answer another video. Um, and so when building your tax business as a tax professional, there's a couple different things you're going to need to know when really starting to build the infrastructure of your business, right? What does that look like on the back end? What does me building my tax business look like? What are my revenue goals? How am I going to reach those revenue goals? What practices need to be put into place? How are they going to be put into place, right? What does that look like structural wise? And I notice that there's not a lot of guidance when it comes to building a tax business other than a lot of these franchises. Franchises take royalty fees off your gross revenue as well as they have costly upfront fees and then they probably have a lot of back-end fees and if you're doing bank products, there's definitely additional fees on the bank products. And so with all of these fees being said, what if I told you that you're thinking about the tax business all wrong 
And you can actually make your first six figures in the tax business fairly easy if you build a sustainable model for your business. Probably wouldn't believe me because there's a lot of tax preps that do do stuff independently and um, as an independent contractor, but they kind of always get stuck around that thirty to fifty thousand dollar revenue mark. It almost gets a little bit difficult for them to make over the fifty thousand. And even the ones that get cl somewhat close to that thirty or fifty thousand dollar number, they almost always give up i want to say around somewhere around that time because they're not able to actually um really fully re review what their business model is and what they're actually trying to get towards so they kind of always hit that hump once they get to that actual number so what if i told you when actually building your tax business there's a lot of different other ways when thinking outside of the box that you can build a, vi a viable sustainable business that will be here around in the next 10 years it sounds crazy right let me tell you it's not there's a couple of different things that need to go into place and a lot of the a lot of the problem with building your tax business is a lot of our processes are outdated right all of these accounting and tax firms they have these great lucrative firms or maybe they have an okay doing firm right what is an okay let's see, let's even talk about let me bring it back what is an okay tax office revenue number can anyone guess what is an okay number so your average tax office in your location and a surrounding location, your average tax office, your average doing well tax office, your really good tax office is kind of going to probably be around a quarter, right? $225,000. That is a good tax office. That is a tax office that has, that maybe does, I don't know, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 returns, um, full staff. That is like a good tax office, right? So what is the difference between those firms that generate that revenue and the firms that are able to build seven figures? The difference is being is in the infrastructure of their business model, how they service their clients and the how, meaning the A to Z, also what their pricing is and how well they retain their clients. Everyone can get clients and you can service your clients, right? But not everyone will be able to build the long term of the company and so there's a couple of different things and mistakes that tax professionals make when building their business and they kind of almost always give up right before they get to their most lucrative last couple of years so tax pros today we getting into it i'm cutting up um a couple of different things that I feel like tax professionals make on the day-to-day, -day, right, um, is when servicing their clients, they aren't able to really build the back end of their business model to make it sustainable for themselves and for their company. So what are some of the ways we can build our said business model? Well, glad that you asked. First of all, your tax partners and software are going to be the number one thing that you guys want to take into account. Your software company, hey. Your tax software company and your tax products, whoever you do your products and you partner in your products with, are gonna be your make or break to success. Your software needs to be able to be compatible. Another common mistake that I see tax professionals make when building out their tax business is that they only want to operate in their tax software program. And what I mean by that is that tax software programs are great when it comes to actually servicing our clients, amazing they do the calculations for us they do a to z for those of you that are tax professionals you guys already know what tax software pro programs do now a common misconception that i see that 90 percent of tax firms don't do is they don't have any type of other internal systems to be able to allow them to build sustainable businesses like a crm like a marketing like marketing tools like a marketing team They're, they they don't focus on the innovations of what it takes to actually build this company versus you can't just build a long-term sustainable company just operating in tax software. You need to be able to have other tech tools and other tech stacks to be able to allow you to build a sustainable company, right? So that's going to look a lot different than you just servicing a couple clients here and there. 
we're actually going to do a webinar on this really 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 we have one tonight and every thursday night on how to build your tax business it's a tax blueprint masterclass and so we're going to go into depth with these lessons on that link but what i what i really want you tax professionals to know is some of the mistakes that you guys are making are fixable but now it being almost october 1st is going to be the first time for you to actually start it's, it's going to be the best time for you to start really making all of the changes you need to make now straight tax us as a tax firm we have our entire 20 year 2022 completely laid out and so we know everything that we're looking to do over the course of the next year. So a lot of these practices that we're going to be talking about over the course of the next few weeks are practices that we also ourselves incorporate in our day to day. Some of those practices are going to be how we manage our customer support, how we grow our business, what our processes look like, what type of software and technology tools look like, how are we, you know, what type of, what, what percentage of our budget of our revenue goes into our marketing, what percentage of our budget goes into our staff, our staffing, what percent of our budget goes into the salary for the business owner right and a seasonal business that's going to look a lot different than if you had a year-round business it's going to look a lot a lot different does anyone have any questions are there any tax pros on live with us today Okay, no questions. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Um, so some of the common mistakes that tax professionals make when building their business is actually having that sustainable business model. So um, our business model started off as a franchise, so we kind of have the foundation of what that franchise business model looked like, but we very quickly realized that having that old school business model wasn't going to be able to create us a long-term plan for how we're going to build our businesses long term and so a lot of a lot of what goes into building our businesses long term have to have budgets in place we have to have our processes in place we have to have our procedures in place on what that looks like so for tax professionals now a majority of you guys are going to be just seasonal revenue right and so when building your business if you are looking to be a full-time tax professional with a full-time tax business, then there are gonna be some things that you need to implement now to even be able to start, to, get, to start getting you to your place, to that place, I should say. And some of those things are going to be incorporating all those things we said you know, five minutes ago in our live. Okay, what type of software are we using? What are our process look like for seeing our client from A to Z? What does our customer service support process look like? You know, look, it's September. There are still taxpayers contacting our office because they haven't found any resolution with their current tax problems because whoever has been servicing their taxes, they can't get a hold of. You guys have to have a customer support process in place for far after you actually send in the e-files. You need to be able to have customer support in place all summer. I know you, we, we work hard in the winter, you guys want to party all summer, but you need to have your customer support processes in line to be able to actually help see your client all the way through. You are the professional. You are the one that should know what they need to do to clear up their said problems. Yes, I get it. This year with how the IRS was this current year, it was a little bit more difficult to get traction through to the IRS and get some of these things cleared up. But in one of our master classes, we're going to go into detail on how to deal with IRS and how to minimize your still your clients still lingering and still processing. There's a lot of ways you can minimize that stuff. But what I think that a lot of tax professionals, what I want you guys to keep in mind, if you're looking to build this for your full-time income, then you can do so, but you're going to need to do so with having a plan in action. And a lot of that, if you want to have a full-year firm, 
you're going to have to be able to offer full year customer support. Now, if you're doing this part time, your full year customer support may not be five days a week from nine to five. It may just be two days a week from four to eight. If you work during the day, it may be two, two full days a week from nine to five or 10 to seven, right? So that you can be there later for the after work people. These are things and seeds that you need to plant in now and be able to accommodate for your clients for even after tax season. But right now it's not after tax season. Right now we're pre-tax season. So this time that we're in right now is currently pre-tax season. And so since we're in pre-tax season, there's a lot of things you guys should be doing now to make sure you guys get set up for a great tax season this upcoming season. So some of those things are going to be reviewing your clients list. How many of your clients, you should know exactly to this date, how many of your clients are still processing from the previous year? You should have a full account for the clients that are still lingering, that are still having issues. You should have an, a, 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 a total number or a total account for how many of those clients are still processing. And you should be figuring out why. Because chances are, if they're still processing, it's gonna be very difficult for you to retain those clients and try to keep them for the ongoing year next year. A lot of the times when tax returns don't get fully processed, the number one thing a taxpayer says is, oh, it was my tax office's fault. And although, it may or may not be if you guys have errors on your returns or not don't know it may or may not be however moving forward it may be that the IRS is holding up their processing return and you have no actual and you don't have any control over that however you as the professional you should have control over that and you should even if you don't have control over pushing the return through to get completely processed you should at least have a follow-up protocol for how you're going to assist your client and so it does take a lot of time to create these systems but once you actually do it and create these systems it becomes an even easier thing and you'll start to notice your retention rates will constantly increase if you can offer different types and levels of support than all of your competitor firms chances are you're going to be able to have the most repetitive clients the most repeat business in comparison to the other tax firms around you so it's october and so if you're looking about looking to start hiring and bringing on more people for the upcoming taxes and you should already be posting ads now and start interviewing now or if you're going to run a tax school program which is a great way to get entry-level tax help in your industry you should be running that now and kind of what that looks like is you getting all of your ducks in order and put it posting your ads and start going through resumes now so that come december when you're getting ready to really open you at least have a list of potential candidates who are looking to come on board there's a lot of things you should do right now in the preseason, and that's definitely one of them Getting ready your marketing campaign get campaigns right now in this preseason is another one too. You don't want to wait till two weeks before tax season starts to try, try to start figuring out what are your marketing campaigns going to look like for this upcoming season or for this upcoming tax year. You want to know in advance what your plan is so that you can budget it out. Pay for the things that you need to pay for and actually such put your plan in motion because most marketing campaigns take a minimum of 30 days to start to see traction. If we know that and we know that most tax offices open right after New Year's, then we know our marketing campaign should be really going live December 1st. And so that, a couple of different things like that are things you guys need to start to take into account when building these tax businesses. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone on here actually own a tax business? Or for those of you that are going to watch the replay, if you have any questions on building your tax business, Tax Pro Thursdays is the day that I will um, answer your questions. And what I really want to stress to you guys is it's building a sustainable company in our industry. Well, building any sustainable company is difficult. Building one in our industry is extremely difficult because I watch a lot of tax pros and accountants work themselves hard to the bone 
and don't really have an exit strategy on what that looks like on the long term for actually exiting one, even exiting or selling their firm if they ever wanted to, right? How many of your guys even know where your tax firms are currently worth? I'll tell you not a lot. And then moving forward from that, you guys also want to build business models that is going to eventually grow a team and be able to help su sustain the payroll to carry this team, right? You want to be able to carry that. You want to be able to do that. And so there's a couple different things that need to be put into place. But I've gone on for about 30 minutes now. So thank you everyone for logging on. It is Tax Pro Thursdays. We will be talking about taxes every Thursday. And so I am going to log off now. If you have any questions, drop a comment, jump in my DMs, and follow Tax Pro Learning for all of our classes and courses for tax professionals that are coming up. Peace out.